Hi everyone, welcome to Loch Doon. Uh, it's the 21st of June, it's the longest day of the, the year. As uh, you can see it's quite bright, uh, we've got some good cloud cover around about us but obviously not uh, above us at the moment. And uh, so I'm going to be fishing for a couple of hours just along the bank here. I'm not going to go too far and uh, see how we got on. And uh, I've got my, believe it or not, I have intention to use a bigger, a longer rod, but I'm just going to use my, my nine foot four weight. Which a five would probably have been better, but uh, well, I'm just going to have a bit of fun with the dry fly. Believe it or not, when I was standing at the top there, I could I seen two or three fish rise just off the ripple here. So I was intending just to fish some some wets. I probably will do, but I'm going to start off with a couple of dries, just fish along the edge of the ripple and see how we go. It's five to twelve. Probably fish to about three. What I've got here, I've got two flies. So I've got the this is a, basically it's a green peter hopper, uh, there's no wing on it, as you may can see there. It's a very good suggestive type pattern. And what I've got as well is I've got the bibio, I've got the grunter uh, on the dropper. You could have fished either, you could have fished this in the point. Uh, I'm putting this one on because uh, even though I've, I'll make it, a put floating on it, I will flow it. But if I want I can pull it and it'll go below the surface easier than what the grunter will. So I'll put that on the dropper and it's about six or so feet from the fly line and then these are about five foot apart. It's just a straight through five pound nylon, nothing fancy, it's fluorocarbon, uh, it's fine and I'm fishing with the wind off my back so it's just cast it and I'm just going to fish along the, the, the edge anyway, I'm not going to go too far out. Uh, mainly the wild, these wild brownies love along the edge of the water so we're going to give it a go. It's just a bit of fun. Uh, it's a good day just to get out for a couple of hours. Uh, it's good when the cloud come, cover comes over. It's actually quite nice. Now, oh, first thing I've got to do is I'm going to debar my hooks. Um, now these these are just wild, but we wild brownies. They could be all sizes. If you get one above the six inch mark, you're laughing. Uh, so that's that debarbed. And my dropper, just deep out a bit. That's fine. I mean, it's, you can come up this lock, and yeah, basically you could catch all day, and you can come up the next day, and you couldn't catch the cold. <laughs> this, this is what this lock is like. And uh, to say it's just a bit of fun. Anyway, we're gonna to say just got the waders on so I can wade out a wee bit if I want. As you can see, there's rocks away in front of us. Just wee, there's a wee island out there. When the water's low, you'll see it. And uh, I can see my two flies there. Don't need to cast far. Obviously, I can wade a wee bit if I want. And. Uh, We'll see how it goes. So see, I've seen a couple of fish rise. No, they're not consistent. They're in. They're just these fish are opportunists. They will have a go at flies. Terrestrial fly. It's a a lot of stuff gets blown on the loch. So these fish are always looking up. If they they'll have a go at anything really sometimes, and then there's times they will not look at anything. So, and I'm just. Using the wind, just casting it and let the, the wind blow it out. Just figure it back, you could pull quite quick. These fish are quite happy to chase a fly. Uh, but allow it to drift as well. Try all the methods just to see. And if we're lucky today we might even see the osprey, because the osprey is nesting up there. Uh, I don't know how the young they should be, I would think, close to 
pledge and other thing. I don't know how long they take, I'm not that sure. But there's a live uh, footage of the, the nest. I should have had a look before I come up. The other things you can see here, you can see the odd kite flying by. And obviously everything else. I say, just when you're on these waters, just you obviously got to be careful. I, I do, I was born and bred here, I don't say I know every stone, but I know a wee bit about the, the, the loch. To be honest with you, I'd, I'd prefer to be on the other side, but it's a fair walk to get there. I've only got a couple of hours, so just have a wee quick cast, see how things go, and like see the loch. You can see all the way down, is the the Galloway Hills, right across, there's bigger more hills on this side but you can't see them at the moment. I'm actually going to go to this point here. Just to give you an idea, I don't know if you can see there, but see how quickly it just drops away. There is a burn comes in here through the winter, so it, it it's a good comes off the hill. It's just basically any excess water comes off off the road and runs down. But what that does, it gets a groove here, and that groove where the water runs is a good area to cast along. But you've got to be careful. Fish just jumped. Oh, I was going to say, and there it was that wee fish came up and turned the fly there. I just saw it there and it came straight up onto the the Bibio Grunter. It's just a wee trout, but anyway, that's what they're like in here. We see how far it wasn't it far out, so they're just along the edge. You don't need to cast to the middle of the loch to catch fish in this, this water. Osprey over there, I think that's the Osprey, it's actually in front of us here. So it is, that is the Osprey. Uh, just flying along, you can see it. It's looking, it's looking along the edge of the lock. It's uh, looking for obviously fish. We may see it dive, we might be lucky enough to see it. It's right, it's directly in front of us, I don't know. The camera can pick it up, but it's right in line with us, flying towards us. I'll keep the, the camera towards it, just in case it, it dies for a fish. We want a bit of cloud cover.
push a wee wee out quite far. Um, too far for me, like. I'll need to wait till it comes in a bit, I think. There we go. Where are we fish? Turn the, the green Peter hopper in the front, so feels like an OB bad. Look at a nice wee fish. Yes, yeah, so I know, not bad. Typical wee brownie for locked in. Lovely colours. Oh, it's a beautiful wee fish. Ah, oh, jeez, they're beautiful colours. There we are. Nice, lovely. And the weight. So that was the, the green peter in the point. So we're off. We've missed one and got one, so we're doing well. 50 50. That may have been that fish I saw rise. Oh, there we go again. Two in a row. Jeez. And again, it's on the, the wee green Peter. Oh. It's a carbon copy. <laughs> you think I just throw it back? No, it's a wee bit weird. There you go. Another lovely wee fish. Gosh, two in a row. Two casts. Jeez. Amazing. Go back out and hopefully, I don't know if I could do three in a row, but you never know. We'll try it, we'll just keep the camera running, see if, it, if we can catch another one. So the dry fly for the day. Oh, there we are, that's good. I mean, that's the typical wee brown trout then. You're looking, if you're getting above that size, you're doing well, like, so they, they're the kind of average size fish on this block. And then, as I say, you get above that, you, you're really, you're laughing. But they're lovely, that was beautiful condition, those fish. I don't know if you can hear the wind, but it's a fair wind blowing. But this is ideal if you want you want a good breeze, a good wind blowing in the loch. Uh, it basically gives you a lot of cover. Do you want to see an ideal length of rod for bank fishing here? Nine and a half, ten foot. You're looking probably a five or a six weight. So I'm basically undergunned with this wee nine footer. Uh, I should have brought the bigger rod, but look, I'm, I'm happy with this. As long as you don't cast too far, basically if you cast too far, striking or connecting to a fish, unless the fish really hang on, you'll, you'll, not, you'll not get any, you'll miss them all. Here I'm just at a nice enough length I can actually strike. As I say, I'm not, you don't cast far and ease this low. I mean, the, the fish come right in, so they do. And even when you're on a boat, you're going to come in and you'll fish mainly towards the bank or along the shore. It's very, I mean, you can't get fish in the, out in the middle of it. Like, if there's fly life there, the fish will eat it there. But, see, there's a nice wee island here. It's, I know it's there because uh, when the water's down, uh, yeah. It's a good area to it's shallow with the fish feed round about it. They like these type of structures. That's probably why I got a couple of fish there. 
So I'm going to concentrate on here, as I say, I'm not going to spend a couple of hours. I mean, the scenery is beautiful, look. I mean, what more do you want than seeing that? Just use the wind to blow your cast out. It's worthwhile stripping the fly quite quick as the wall, the brownies like chasing here as well. Just fish round about you. So, see, on the, the cast I've got on, it's just a basic straight through. I mean, I could use a tapered leader and uh, two flies off it, which is probably you would turn over a bit better. But I'm using straight through five pound nylon, a uh, dropper. Uh, the flies are about five foot apart. And then it's about maybe six or so from the fly line. There's a fish there. Just below me actually. Just it's just below here. I see they're not far out. Oh, there I had a go at it there. I actually had a go at the fly. <laughs> didn't touch it, it just had a wee swirl at it. No, no, didn't like it. Anyway, we'll go back out. So you just either just keep in contact with your flies or if you want pull and as you're lifting off lift the rod wheel up and just drag the flies through and uh, can then just a take. As I say they fish they come right up, right and close to the shore. Check my flies are okay. Every so often, just obviously check the flies are sitting. Uh, there's no tangles. There's no. Everything's fine. That's okay. Yep. No use fishing if the flies are tangled. Anyway, we're going to work our way down. So just this wee area here. I'm not going to again just wade out a wee bit. Keeps you nice and cool if you can. Just just so I can fish along the edge. So see, I've got these two dries on, but I can I can if I want pull them so they go down and sort of wet. But. I don't think that's too far. It's always worth casting below you. You see these fish work along the bank. So they're quite happy to you can catch them in front of your feet.
Oh. Oh, missed it. Had him on for a second. Just a wee fish, but you see how far that was. I actually drowned the flies there, so and then quite quite a fast figure eight. And uh, he chased it. Um, sometimes with these wee browns they love a love chasing a fly. Just the more ways you can fish the fly the better, present the fly. And uh, As I say, these be wild brown trout, they're opportunists, they'll, they'll grab, they'll splash at your fly, they'll do lots of things. And uh, even in bright sunshine like we're getting, they'll still come up and give a fly a go. Not always, like, but they'll, they'll, if they see a chance of something to eat, they'll go for it. And you can fish, I'm only fishing two flies, you could easily fish a team of three or four flies. It's up to yourself. And if you're really adventurous, you could put more on. <laughs> but uh, I'm quite happy with a couple of flies. If they're really on dries, I'll just fish a single fly, kind of, if they were taken. But uh, two is fine. Good to come up in the evening. Only issue with times if you do come up in the evening that the wind drops away and you get the famous midgy coming on the loch on you <laughs> and then you become the meal. So a good water I mean there's lots of I mean I mean there's midges are like there's so many millions, billions and they're minute, they're tiny wee things. And you would think, what's that going to do? But oh geez, they drive you insane. But anyway, no chance today. The midges with the wind, they don't like the wind because they're so small, they get blew away. So they're laying the grass. So they do. Oh, jeez. Oh, I missed that. I'll see, I'll put it back out. That thing, the. That was a nice trout as well. I'll just put it back out in case he comes back. I was saying there about the midges, if you lie in the grass you'll get bit. Because that's where they're lying. That was a broad trout. I actually saw that fish. I actually took the, the bibio, the grunter. I'm back out, go this way. Normally the fish swim against the wind and uh, they'll move up. Oh, that wasn't a good cast. Just gonna check my flies. But we didn't jag him, so that was the thing. So he's still, if he's keen to feed again, to feed, he'll we'll come back. So don't be shy about casting back over. I mean, there's many a time I've come up the loch and not even touched a fish, not even seen a fish. So to catch a couple and miss two or three, is, I'm quite happy, to be honest with you. Um, Oh. Missed that one. Another take, so that's good. Fisher. 
Taking the bibio again. That was a bibio it took. It wasn't as big as the last fish. Try this one, I'll try and I'll strip it in for a change just to see. I'm not seeing any, I mean, many fish, or I can hear the odd one uh, rise behind me or just. These fish are just coming out of nowhere. I may put a wet fly in the point, add the three flies, just to see, just it's going to be worthwhile putting a fly down and uh, just curious just to see it's quite easy to add another fly on just put the point fly then becomes another dropper like I say it's worth doing I think that's what will do it just there are fish, there's fish there, it's just finding what they're willing to do so what I'll do is I'll just add another fly on Now what I've done here is I've added a, this is a small sepia, or claret dun, if you can see that there. Put that in the point, I've got the green peter hopper in the middle, and the top dropper I've got uh, the grunter, the bibio. So I've got three flies on now. I just want to get the point fly down a wee bit, and uh, see what happens. Something different. Just like, I mean, two dries, I've still got my two dries on. I'm just going to fish them the way that, oh, there's a wee fish come up. Oh, ah. Come up again there. Jeez, first cast. It had a look at the fly on the cast back out there. It's, uh, Missed one there. Too busy moving. Put it back out. They'll sometimes come back, as you, you've probably seen. Now we've changed to basically put a wet fly in place of the the grunter. Um, the fish were splashing at it, but not really taking it, so not a good. So I've changed to I've got the black fly. I've got a, a, basically a cruncher on, and uh, I've kept the dry in the middle, uh, the hopper. So if I want it, it's there's still an odd fish coming to it, and I've hooked fish on it, so. Um, I'll keep it on and then I've got the nymph in the point just to see I've had a couple of tarps, pools but they're kind of half hearted like they're not normally these wee brownies hit, hammer the fly uh, I'm getting a kind of half look but we'll just keep so just work away just enjoy the day enjoy a couple of hours out And uh, see how we got on. Lovely stone.
So that if we get the cloud cover it makes a difference because that's when I've been getting most of my takes. The clouds uh, disappeared a wee bit. We've got cloud round about us but not above us. changed a wee bit, it's actually coming towards us now instead of coming straight behind me, it's coming from my right side so Fish further out there. Let's see if I can cover them. It's the first trout I've seen rising for a wee while. So, so they'll always work up against the wind, so just cast above and they should be swimming up the lane or so. Maybe a bit further over, I don't think I was far enough over there. Oops. I'm going to fly to the cell. I did change to the nymph in the point and uh, I think I actually missed a fish or two on it but uh, it's no not quite anything right yet so I may change back to the two dries uh, put a new cast on because that was rising fish quite regular in the dries so oh there we go that's a good take as well Where are we? There's a wee bounty. Good. First for a wee while on it again, it's on the green Peter. Oh, slide off the cell. See, it's on the green Peter, so lovely wee bounty. Oop. The way it was a good pull that. So basically hooked itself. Normally you find when they're really on taking the fly, they hit it. I mean that's a good solid take. So as you see it what it does it they twirl round and round and round. And uh this is why you get a mess in your you drop it, Oops. just unravel it. So anyway, there's first wee fish for a wee while. Which I mean, to be honest with you, I was expecting the day, I wasn't expecting to come up here and murder fish, as they say. Catch fish after fish. You always hope you can, like, but... We'll see, we'll get back out there and catch another one, hopefully. I wonder if that was that fish I saw rising, you never know. And, uh, as I say, a proper good take, it was a good solid pull. Normally, this wheel won't, you don't want any of these half hearted taps, you want good pulls.
what you're seeing here is this is the bottom half of the lock. It goes where the hills are in front is it goes away round and uh, it goes for the same again, flatly. A good distance up and uh, it's a bit narrower, like it's not as wide as this point here. Well, it's the widest bit, this is where it's just there. But it's in a big water to try and find fish. So it is. You get. I mean, there's, there's a couple of clubs on the lock from the local village. And uh, we've got boats on further up. You need an outboard and then you can go and fish. The far side's really good. If I was fishing today, I'd be fishing along the bank, the far side. With the wind blowing against, the, I mean, the shore, which is a great area. I mean, for me to get there, I've got, <laughs> it takes a bit of walking. Uh, I like to fish against the wind a bit. Mostly directly against the wind. I like to use the wind and... I mean, just now it's alright. I mean, you, I mean, you get a good cast, but what you do is just get the wind off your shoulder that suits you. And... Uh, you just need to be fishing off the shore, you don't have to fish far. You can wade out. Check my flies. Make sure everyone's okay. Yep, sound. So when you see a fish rising, you really got to cover it because um, basically that's the only fish probably in the area at that point, so it's, it's, a, well, it's a feeding fish, which is a good sign, so they're looking like that fish I just caught there, I reckon, that, and that's the one I saw rising, that's just worked its way in a wee bit. Tap there. Fish rose to the other side of me here, but I want to get back out here because that was a good, felt like a good pull. I'll just watch for that, that, that fish that rose to the left of me here. It's going to fly a second to settle. Fish rose there at my fly. Just pulled a wee bit faster there, I knew it was in the area. I think it took the wee nymph this one. There you go. Good. Feels like the better. Feels like a nice enough fish. Yeah, it's the best one, I think. No, it's doing the dropper. Oh, it's away. That one took, took the black fly. Good. I think I saw it. I mean, I'm sure it was a nice fish that. Hopefully we'll catch another one. This is actually off a nice bank here. It's... Um, And a grassy bottom here, which is probably off a good some food line in it. I actually saw that fish twirl at the fly, and then I think it kind of 
I was half looking at it and decided just to get a wee pull and it encouraged it to take. What I might do is I might change this point fly and this doesn't seem to be doing much. So I'll change it to I may put a cocky bundy on. We fly up it on, it's a cocky bendy, a cocky bundy, it's got a wee red tag as well as a, a yellow tail. Nice wee pattern. Just gonna debarb it. Make sure it will make sure it's debarbed anyway. There you go. You can actually see the one or two rocks just below the surface here, which is in front is, and uh, ideal kind of areas where you get fish lying off. These rocks below the surface are good. It's a cover for the trout. There's a fish there. Oh, there you go. Oh, just a <laughs> just a wee fish. Oh, there's a wee. There was a fish. I mean, it's just a tiny wee neck to the surface. You don't know what size they are until you've actually hooked them. I mean, that rise earlier, that turn at the fly was just a wee swirl. Didn't look that much. There was a decent fish below it. So we're having quite a good day, really. I mean, considering the conditions are not the best. To see a wee bit more cloud, I like a bit more cloud. It was supposed to be really cloudy. I mean, there is cloud there, but not enough to... ...make it a wee bit better. I prefer the more cloud in this. So whenever you see a rise, get straight over it. The reason I've got the rod as close to the water as you can see is so that I've got more of contact with my flies. If you're way up here, you'll miss most of the fish. Sometimes you need that to allow the fish to turn. But these fish, are, I mean, when you're fishing, they're really nippy. I've got a soft rod, this rod's soft, so I will give, uh, take away that hard take. But you've really got to keep in contact with your flies, especially fishing barbless. Uh, it's, you do miss a lot. If I had barbed hooks, I'd probably hooked, uh, I'd probably landed two or three more fish. But that's the way it goes. There's a rocks here. There's rocks just in front of me here, so. I mean, it's a good thing to be there, but it's just put it over the top of them. And fishing between the rocks here. I can just see them below the surface there, no more. Like, and uh, as I say it's a good area to for fish to lie.
check the flies. Should really check them after hooking the stone just to make sure the flies are okay. Yep. That's fine. Yep. Thing I'll do is I'll move down a bit and go back onto the point there. These are the areas you want to be fishing is off a point. Usually the most productive areas. There we go, that's a nice fish this. Feels nice anyway. Again, I think it's doing a green pita. Oh, it's a perch. <laughs> Got a perch. Jesus. There we go, folks. My first perch. This is got these jaggy, jaggy fins. Let me see what I say. There you go, a perch. Anyway, there we go. That like a trout. <laughs> Could I swore it was a trout. Anyway, here we are. Again, there's a green peter. That's a green peter hopper. Usually if there's one perch around, there's another. A good pool and it actually looked like it I mean, normally it just come in like a, a wet lettuce really. They don't really fight that much. Anyway, there we are. First perch. Years ago, if, we, if you wanted to catch perch, you'd, you'd basically bait fish. Uh, you never really touched them in the fly. Anyway. A stone here. Shows you how shallow it is there. It's oh dear, I'm gonna lose my fly here. Probably lost my cast there. I have lost my cast. Well, give me an excuse to fish two dries, I'll, I'll be back to the dry fly, so we'll get back to that. Okay, I've just worked my way along to where I started earlier. And uh, two dries on again, as I say. It's actually, we've got some good cloud cover now. Oh. I don't know, there was a wee trout right in front of me here, but I don't think it was very big. I'll just get a wee bit. You never know about these trout, I mean, these nip to the surface, you, well, they, you never know until you've actually hooked the fish, what they like.
I would have loved to have been on the other side. So the wind is blowing against that bank there, it's it's always good to fish there. Uh, at least fish into it. If I had the boat, that's where I'd be. Plus it looks, it looks good over there. With the trees. That's where I got the two brownies earlier. Okay, well I've changed to a couple of wet flies. I've got the black panel and uh, I basically I put a river fly on a hair's, it's just a woodcock and hair's ear, which are good patterns. Um, we've got a week in a Pausing the wind here, I'm just it's kind of twirling round about. This, I don't know what's going to happen, but anyway, I need to get the wind behind or some of the wind. Uh, I'm going to give it half an hour before I head down the road. I'm starting to show the signs I've been getting roasted with the sun for when it was out there, even though I'd factor 50 or whatever they call it. <laughs> Uh, it didn't seem to stop the sun. Anyway, I'm getting into this area here where the wind seems to be coming across here, which will suit me better. There's yeah, a couple. Of you know, a fish, it'd be good to get a fish before I finish. And it's done okay considering the conditions. But it's just good to get out for two or three hours. And, uh, as I say, it'd be, it's a big lock to try and cover and find fish. So, but anyway. We'll give it another half hour before we head down the road. The wind's picking up a wee bit more, which may help. I think that's the difference from earlier, the, the wind was a bit stronger. I see that water temperatures, well, it's not too bad, but it is a bit warmer, is it? First fish I've seen in a wee while, a wee trout rose there. Let's see if I can cover it. Or keep an eye on the area anyway. Look, it's, it's, it's the first fish I've seen move for a wee while. Oh, there we go. What are we going to finish with, fish? <laughs> It's only a wee fish, but look, it's like a bar of gold, just catching a fish. There we are. Lovely wee brown trout. Oops. Just raise the weight. There we go. Great. First fish I've seen rising. God knows how long. And we covered them in a ten to fly. So I'm saying if you see the fish rise here and you have a chance of catching. And lovely wee brown trout as well. Well, there we are, folks. 
hope you enjoy the video and the scenery obviously it's a lovely place to fish locked in uh, I see it's this used to be my playground I just lived over the hill there and uh, it was just a matter of walking up and the whole summer I spent in this loch there was hardly a day I didn't, I didn't fish it or been on it or even camping we did all that when we were boys so it's always good to get back to where you were born and brought up so anyway I hope you enjoy the video again uh, I know they're not the biggest fish in the world but they are fun to catch and you never know what size you're going to get there is bigger fish in there it's just on the day that's what we call it so anyway until next time and from Loch Dune